Talking with Orson Welles. I guess I just can't get over that childhood of yours. The little scraps I've read about it, it sitting at tables at your age with people who were, well, f uh, in other countries for one thing, but sometimes world leaders, I suppose. Or were there any world leaders? Oh, there? yes. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the world leader that, uh, that, that uh, really came to nothing, as far as my memory is concerned, was Hitler. Uh, I, well, I was uh, being escorted. This, I went twice through the, through the Tyrol and uh, Austria and German uh, hiking country, once mm -hmm. with, a, with one teacher and once with another. And one of the, the two teachers was, it turned out, a, a, a sort of a budding Nazi. And there was a big Nazi rally in, near Innsbruck. In the days when the Nazis were just a, a very comical kind of minority party of nuts that nobody took seriously at all, mm -hmm. except my hiking companion, this uh, gentleman in his knapsack, and he wangled a place at the table with the great men of this tiny little party of cranks. And uh, I remember very well afterwards, uh, Stryker was the leader of the big anti-Semitic campaigns, and... Uh, uh, two or three other well-known people to this day. The man sitting next to me was Hitler, and I, he made so little impression on me that I can't remember a second of it. Gee. He had no personality whatsoever. Wonder if under it was invisible. I wonder if under hypnosis it would come out. Do you, no, I think there was nothing there uh -huh. that anybody would remember. Did you had 5,000 people yelling, Sieg Heil, yeah. Heil Hitler. That's the whole point of the story, that there wasn't anything to remember. What about those films that were made about him by Lainey Riefenstahl? Pretty is good it, films. Are they, they, they? You often hear that they're... They are awfully like, well made, yes. Is she alive? Yes. Have you met her? No, I haven't met yeah. her. But she's living, I think, in England or some place like that and, yeah. and uh, uh, hustling around trying to get, uh, you know, s to flog a documentary here and there yeah. on al almost any subject. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting thing. I never met Stalin. I, would, uh, I never met Stalin, but... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, Roosevelt I knew very well, and Churchill, and lots of, during childhood and then youth, of course. Yeah. I was very lucky in that respect. What age were you when you were orphaned? Well, my mother died when I was uh, six and, uh, no, seven. And my yeah. father died when I was uh, 15, beginning of my 15th birthday. Then yeah. I ran away, tried to stay out of school, out of Harvard. I had a scholarship and mm -hmm. desperate not to be educated, I, I went into the theater. De I, I, I made it. I wasn't educated. What if you, what if you uh, were now? I mean, what if you wanted to go to school? What, do you have any idea what you want to study now? Gee, that's a good question. Everything, I guess. But yeah. if I wanted to be a, to study seriously, you know, and get good at a subject, I think mm -hmm. it would be anthropology. Don't you think that's fascinating stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I would too. I don't know. Or maybe philosophy. I, I never yeah. thought about it very much. I, I'm suspicious of philosophy. I have a real philistine doubt about its worth, you know. But anthropo anthropology seems to me to be just at its beginnings, yeah. and philosophy, kind of at its end. And we are at the end of this segment, but we will be what right back. Is that, that too was, uh, yeah. <laughs> too contrived? We'll be back after this message. Who else stands out from that, that time in your life? When it, what, what faces come to mind? Uh, yeah, well, you mean famous ones. Sure, or infamous. Yes. Or not yeah. famous yeah. or any of that. Well, we had Schickel Gruber, but, uh, yeah. uh, you, know, you, you, you know, you know wonderful people that, uh, that aren't famous. I, I guess one of the most remarkable people I ever knew was somebody called Cornelia Lunt and Alfred Lunt used to pretend to be her cousin. They weren't related at all. They loved each other. And uh, she was, when I knew her, in uh, her middle 90s and had been a hostess of great importance, although very young, in the Civil War in America and knew intimately all the great names of the Civil War. I could tell you all about what Lincoln said and what my great-grandfather Gideon Wells said, who was Secretary of Navy in the Cabinet. And it was a great kind of raconteur on the Civil War. And then she went over to London, where she was at the American Embassy, 
and where she knew everybody in uh, England. All those fabulous people that seemed to have been dead for 200 years, you know, in the Victorian yeah. age. Yeah. And uh, it was, you could only get her to tell about these things with great difficulty. She didn't go on and on like I do. You had to, had to drag it out of her, and she was delicious. She was an old lady who, when she gave a big party, sat on a little stool, and she gave you a big chair. If you can imagine an old lady like that. She was very beautiful. Must have been not so beautiful when she was young, but one of those people that old age glorifies. And she had a little bell. And when she wanted everybody to be quiet so she could say something, she'd ring her bell. <laughs> and then we'd all be quiet and she'd make her little statement, then ring it again and everybody could talk again. <laughs> and uh, she's one of the great people I've known, you know, as great, certainly, as, uh, as Churchill or Roosevelt or George Marshall. And I suppose Marshall is the greatest man I ever met. Really? Yes, I would think what, so. What would you admire what, about him above everybody else? Human being. Mm -hmm. I think he's the... He's the greatest human being who was also a great man who I was ever mm. privileged to meet. Have you known some that were... Can I tell a little story about him? Certainly. We'd been campaigning for Roosevelt, not George Marshall, but some of the rest of us. And one of our rewards, when he got in again, one of those many times that he did, was to go to a big party of very big brass and sit on the dais and be treated as though we were part of the high command just for one night. And there were all these tremendous names from the Second World War. Two or three civilians. Truman, the vice president, who was playing the piano. We were rather embarrassed about that because uh, uh, he didn't seem to be awfully good on the piano. <laughs> We didn't know that he was going to be a great president, you see. I see. And it didn't look as though he did either. <laughs> but he and my... So there were only about four or five civilians. All the rest were tremendous brass, dripping with gold, braid, and medals, and everything else. And it was in the Mayflower Hotel in Washington. And the door opened. And uh, G.I., more innocent looking than anything you could possibly imagine and younger than anything you could dream of, stuck his head in. Mm. At the moment when General Marshall happened to look toward the door and the boy looked at him, he said, gee, General Marshall, can I come in and say hello to you? Marshall said, yeah, come in. And Marshall didn't know anybody was watching. This wasn't a grandstand play. I was in a position, my camera was angled so he didn't know he was getting photographed in anybody's film of memory. Yeah. And he took the boy aside, away from everybody, and sat down with him. And I heard as he went that the boy had been away from home. And, was, and the boy recognized Marshall as somebody like a family. Now, this was the commander of the, all the Allied forces. And he sat with this boy without any grandstanding at all mm -hmm. and just put him at ease and made him feel at home again for half an hour and left all the rest of us. He was that kind of fellow. I wonder what the difference is between a man like that and the ones who are impressive publicly but couldn't be bothered to talk to anyone that isn't important to them or flattering. Well, I, I don't know. Those, those kind of people are all second rate who can't be bothered at all, ever. Mm -hmm. But there are those who can't be bothered sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's... You had a feeling with Marshall that if it were possible to be bothered, he would let himself be bothered. He was a tremendous gentleman, you know, mm -hmm. an old-fashioned institution which isn't with us anymore. You almost never want to ask anyone the question who's impressed you the most. And it's, it's wonderful yeah. to have a guest who can give you the answer. Well, I never do Something know the like answers that. to those kind of They're questions, hard, you know, but I just yeah. happen to know that one. Yeah. 